It's 2023 and I know you're saying a new year, new me, new design trends. Well, that's not what today's video is about. I'm not talking about new design trends. I'm talking about old design trends that are not going to make it into 2023. I know I'm going to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm going to tell you why and I'm going to show you how you can tweak them affordably so that you don't have to break the bank keeping up with 2023 trends. If you're new here, hello, my name is KB and I believe everyone deserves a beautiful home regardless of their budget and I teach you how to do it with any budget. Now let's get into today's video. Now, the first item that is not going to make it into 2023 is the Mario Bellini sofa. Now, if you don't know what that sofa is, this sofa took over the world in 2022. It was the cloud sofa of 2022. And then you're like, ooh, the cloud sofa is ugly and you have one. How, why should I trust you? I like it. It's comfortable. Come take a nap and then, then you'll know why I still have it. But anyway, the Mario Bellini sofa took over the world last year because people were so into the modern organic. And this sofa, a lot of people are getting remakes of the original sofa. Now, now this sofa, it looks cool, it looks rad, it has the curved edges, it has some tufting, it has some metal in it. This sofa looks good and it's not going out of style because it's ugly. You know, some things go out of style because they are just plain ugly. I'm talking about those all leather recliners. They're ugly, right? But this sofa is cute. But the reason why it is going out of style is twofold. Number one, and this is the reason that we get for every single one of these items, it was overdone. One person got it and then suddenly every furniture store threw away all of their, the rest of their inventory and they said this sofa is the sofa right but the second reason why this sofa is not going to make it into 2023 is due to the fact that it is uncomfortable first of all this sofa is low to the ground you have to take an elevator to sit down right um, and elevator maintenance is is very expensive but also there is tufting in it which means that there are lots of grooves where you can get stuck in so it's not a sofa where you're gonna lay down and take a nap on it it's more of a looking sofa it's a styling sofa it's a sofa that looks fantastic fantastic in the background, but you secretly have, you know, um, a lazy boy somewhere else. You know what I mean? It is not a big comfy couch. It is a big, pretty couch. And for that reason, it's not going to make it into 2023. Now this next thing doesn't really make sense to me, but I've been reading this everywhere. So the next thing that is not going to make it into 2023 when it comes to interior design is chopping your pillows. Now I didn't know the way I positioned my pillows could be trendy, but alas it is. I love that anything could become a trend. I love that about design in the world and just like in general, right? But chopping the pillow is no longer in because people say that it is, it's too sterile. It's too well curated. You want everything to look kind of lax and like it's just kind of thrown together. And I kind of resent that idea, right? That you want your home to be thrown together, but you still spent 20 minutes arranging that throw so that it looked like you actually threw it. I think that that's absolutely hilarious. And I also very much so relate. But um, chopping the pillows is out. People actually want their pillows to be nice and full and kind of flat and floppy and just just like lounging about. You want your pillows to be as comfortable as you are on the sofa. That is the look people are going for. And instead of actually sitting them straight out, they are leaning them back at an angle. And they're like, hey, I'm a pillow, I'm chilling. I don't really know what this trend is about and I would love some more insight on it. So if you guys have any thoughts about this, be sure to let me know down in the comments. But chopping your pillows is out in 2023. People have been honestly attacking me for this in years and honestly, I don't care because I like it. But this is something that I'm seeing on the internet. People are done with chopping the pillows. They want a more relaxed look. If you want a more relaxed look, here's how you're gonna do it. Instead of overstuffing your pillow covers like I've told you to do for years and years and years, you're just going to get a pillow cover that is true to size. That's it. We're not buying new pillow covers that is too expensive. Pillow covers cost more than like some medications. It doesn't make any sense, right? So we just want to get a pillow insert that is true to size so that we can keep using those same pillow covers. So if this is something that you wanna buy into, that is how you can do so. Ooh, I'm coming out swinging on this one. I'm feeling feisty this morning because I had a lot of coffee and you can see my coffee right here. But the next trend that is not going to make it into 2023 or so I suspect is the puck light hack. Now I love the puck light hack, right? I am, I am the bear of bad news. I deliver the message. That doesn't mean I agree with the message, right? But the next thing is the puck light hack. And if you don't know what that hack is, you get a puck light, which you can get really affordably at Five Below, Walmart, this store, that store, right? And you can put it inside of a sconce or a lamp that has a shade that hides that puck light. This enables you, right, to have 
have some lighting on, even if you don't want to hardwire that entity, which I really love, right? Because some of us live in rentals, some of us don't want to pay an electrician, some of us cannot find an electrician, right? Or we just don't really feel like going through the bother of doing that, right? Because it's it's just, it's laborious for no reason. So we're using the puck lights to get the look for less. But the thing with puck lights, especially if they don't come with remotes, I know someone's already writing a comment about how I move my hands too much, so I'm going to sit them in my lap. Even though uh, puck lights are great, if they do not have a remote, that means that you have to stick your hand inside of the lamp or inside of the sconce every time you want to use it. And that is a pain, right? Because a lot of the times we forget to turn them off and then the batteries die and so on and so forth. So I think that this hack is going to be over. Now, I'm not saying there isn't an alternative because obviously we want items that do not need to be hardwired. So I believe people are going to start using battery operated light bulbs quite like this one. So this is a battery operated light bulb and it is magnetic and it is peel and stick. But the good thing about this is you can just twist it into your ordinary light socket. So instead of having to get a puck light and kind of finesse it so that it will fit in that lamp, this is just a light that you can put in there. It's battery operated. If you unscrew it, you'll see the batteries. I'm not going to do that because they'll go flying. And it does give off cool light, but there's a button and it comes with two remotes and it comes in a pack of four for like 35 bucks. So this is what I think people are going to be using instead, just because you don't have to finesse it. You don't have to find some way to make the puck light stay. And there's a remote, right? So it's a lot easier. Sure, you can get puck lights with remotes. I'm not saying that you can't, but they're just not as widely available or as accessible financially. So I think these are really gonna take over. Now they have these ones, they have like emergency light bulbs, but what I love about these are these are battery operated. You don't need to stick them in a lamp to recharge it like some of the other ones. They're not emergency light bulbs in that way. You just put some batteries in here. They come with batteries, though the batteries are already dead for some reason by the time they arrive, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but these are fantastic and I think these are really going to take over and replace the puck light hat in 2023. The next trend, the next item that's not going to make it into 2023 is the linen curtain. So, all right, let, there's a caveat here. I think if you're still into modern organic and the bohemian, it is going to stay in. Linen is an evergreen fabric, right? It comes from the earth. We love linen. Why? This is a linen loving YouTube channel, right? I'm not going to slander linen. But what I will say is that in design styles like glam and contemporary or modern rather, um, in mid-century modern, that the linen requires too much upkeep. There are so many other fibers that we could use that don't require us to stand next to our curtains for like five hours every week steaming them to get out of all the wrinkles. When it comes to like the modern organic and the bohemian, wrinkles are in, right? Wrinkles are rad. Wrinkles are stylish. When it comes to the other design styles, wrinkles are not it. Wrinkles are taboo. We don't want the wrinkles, right? We want to look fine, refined and crisp and clean and wrinkles just don't give that. So I think that linen curtains aren't going to be as popular across all design styles quite like they were last year. Now, another qualm I have with linen curtains is the fact that they're not insulating, right? Um, they're just there. They're just chilling. They're just there to look pretty. Uh, I will say that the the linen the linen curtains just look pretty, right? There's not much depth to them, right? But with other curtains, you have like a cotton curtain or a velvet curtain, they're also insulating, right? So they're keeping us warm or blocking out some of the sunlight. They have more of a dual purpose, whereas that just really isn't the case with the linen curtains. So while we like the look of linen curtains, I just don't think they're going to be as widely popular. So I think we're going to see them dissipate in popularity in 2023. Now this one just puts a smile on my face. The next trend, the next item that I think is going to disappear in 2023 is the television centered living room. Now all the time people say to me, how can I center my space around the TV? And I'm like, why the TV? Why the TV? Why not that beautiful family portrait? Why not that sculpture you dug out of the trash and told your spouse you really needed to keep? Um, why not literally anything else? Because for so long we have centered our spaces around television. Now I'm not saying don't watch television. I watch every Every single episode of the last Love Island okay so I am dedicated because Love Island has like 50 episodes in a season okay so I love television but having my space centered around the TV then the first thing you look at is the TV. What about that sofa you spent all that money on? Or that coffee table you spent six hours styling? Or that mirror that took 20 people to get it in the house? Why aren't we looking at those things instead of the television? I think that um, we've spent the last three years almost just binge watching TV and being in the house. And I think people are less focused on television now and more focused on you know having a home that feels like home that they can relax in, but also fostering communication and interaction when you are at home. And I think that means not 
not having a space centered around a TV because let's just face it, when the TV comes on, there's less familiar interaction. We're all just scrolling on our phones, right? Voting for Love Island and what couple we think should stay. And instead we're not asking the other person how they're doing or really engaging because you truly are not looking at one another. So how are we going to accomplish this? Well, this is one of those, uh, those trends that I don't think you need to spend any money to accomplish, which I love, right? Um, what we're gonna do is restructure our living rooms, move some furniture about, make it so that you have parallel sitting arrangements so that if you're sitting on one sofa, the chairs are right across from it, right? So you're like, if the person is sitting in the chair, you are forced to talk to the person on the sofa because you're looking right at one another. You can't even look away awkwardly. They have no choice but to engage. Um, we are going to just angle things so that we're looking at mirrors more, looking at artwork more. You don't need to spend more money. We just don't wanna be focused on television because it is so important to detach in this day and age where everyone is so focused on technology. Um, I think this one is going to be easier said than done. I know people are gonna be like, all right, Kiva, all right, mm, pff, shut up. Um, but it's one that I think is worth saying. What color do you think took over into your design in 2022? <laughs> the answer is brown. The answer is the color brown. Brown took over, brown replaced gray in 2022. And I was here for it. I liked it. I bought into it a little bit and guess what? I've since reversed it. Now, brown is a wonderful color, right? Because brown reminds us of the earth. I love those organic elements, but if we put too much brown in the space, it starts like giving King of Queens a little bit too easily. And if you've not seen King of Queens, it's one of the best shows to ever grace the planet earth. So you should go watch it, right? So it's giving a little bit too much man cave. It's giving drab. It's giving like seventies, right? And that's not what we want to give up. We want to have brown, <clears throat> but we want to use brown as an accent, just like we use every single other color. Monochromatic is really, Really, really hard to accomplish no matter what, right? And if we do that with brown, we're really darkening a space. And sure, brown tends to be a warm color, which is nice, but we're really darkening a space. And when a space is dark, it feels smaller, right? So for two reasons, that is not something that we want to do. I think what happens is that we find a color, we run with it. We're like, oh, woohoo, new color, let's have fun, right? And we just take it to the extreme. And I think that's what happened with brown. People are like, ah, oh, brown is in, so now I need to replace my floors and replace my ceiling and buy all new pillows and buy a new sofa and buy a wooden coffee table. And it was just too much brown. Brown threw up in all of our homes in 2022, and we are just not going to tolerate that in 2023. I think brown will continue to be a prevalent color, but I think we'll mix it in. I think people are loving organic colors like brown and rust and burgundy and green. I think people are loving those colors, and we are going to introduce them, and we are going to sprinkle them throughout. We're not going to let them overwhelm our spaces. There's always a color every single year that overwhelms a space, and this year it just happened to be brown, and for the years between, I want to say honestly, 2018 and 2020, um, the color was gray, right? So it always happens, but I think brown is going to become a little bit less popular. I see a lot of people now painting their walls like dark beige, right, to get to brown and all of that. And you're just making your homes dark, and I promise you, you're gonna reverse it by the time you move. So just sprinkle it in. Don't make it the end all be all when it comes to your interior design. Another design facet that I think is going to really decrease in popularity in 2023 is having a style that doesn't make sense with where you live. So what does that mean? So so I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is steel city, baby. And that means that we love industrial. And guess what? My home is very industrial. Now, what would I look like trying to turn my industrial loft that has exposed ceilings and all of this exposed hardware and metalwork and try to make it into an English cottage? I am not in England. This is not a cottage. There is not one thing cozy about this place. And I know that this happened because I tried it at the beginning of my design journey. We want to have design styles that make sense for where we live. Now, I know I know all the, it's the celebrities fault. We're going to blame them. It's their fault. They're like, oh, I have all the money in the world. I'm going to change. I'm going to change this into a nice like uh, Parisian home. Ma'am, you don't live in Paris. You live in Los Angeles. The closest you're going to get to Paris is Las Vegas. You know what I mean? That, that's where the closest Eiffel Tower is. You're nowhere near Paris, right? But because they have all the money in the world, they have achieved this, but it doesn't make sense to have a style that doesn't make sense based off of where you live. One, it's going to impact your resale value if you're if you're selling a house. When you're gonna have people come in, they're gonna be like, what on earth is going on with these people? Um, but secondly, you just want something that makes sense with the exterior of your home because you have to think about the experience looking at the outside of the home and then coming in. I have this one client, she lives in California, she had a really Spanish style home, so she painted it and she did some work to make it work more with her like modern luxury style, right? Because the exterior and the interior, they need to complement one another. They need to complement one another. And when you have a home that's kind of out of place, 
it sticks out like a sore thumb um, when it comes to investors and future owners and all that stuff. And also just the people coming in your home and your own experience in your home, right? It makes it a lot more difficult to try and achieve a design style that does not go with the millwork and just like the framework of your home. Truly, you're making design more difficult for yourself. If you do not live in a space where there are farmhouses, you do not need a modern farmhouse. Should I print that on a t-shirt? I think I should. So that is really the, the moral of the story here. We want things that make sense based on where we live. Of course, you can, if you, if you want, if you want to have your, you know, Bali style home in the middle of Maryland, I am not going to stop you. I'm not going to come breaking down your door talking about you doing something wrong. I am not the design police. I'm just going to say it'll be a lot easier for you if you choose a design style that makes more sense for where you live. This is similar to the color brown, so I'm not going to go on and on about it. But light brown wood became super popular because Scandinavian design has been taking over the world. It has migrated over here and we're loving it. We're eating it up and it is in part Ikea's fault. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love Scandinavian design. It's simple. It's cool. It's chic. And light wood has taken over. Now, light wood is great. But we want to have um, some, some dimension when it comes to our wood tones. We don't want every wood tone in our home to match. Not everything has to be light in color, because let's just face it, if you wear lots of black clothes, if you have a lot of dust and debris, you're going to see it on that light colored wood a lot more than you're going to see it on the dark colored wood. The reason why I think it's going to be less popular, one, it's overdone, quite like many of the other things we've said today, but less importantly, two, it is way too much work to uh, maintain. If you scratch light wood, you're going to see it. If there's dust on light wood, you're going to see it. If you stain your light wood, you're going to see it. And in 2023, we're going to work way less hard to make our homes look beautiful, right? It should be almost effortless because if maintaining your home becomes a job, that is not a job any of us want let's quit. If you like cool tone wood, scatter many different variations of cool tone wood in your home. If you like warm tone woods, scatter many different variations of warm tone wood in your house. But not everything has to match. Not everything has to be perfect. Let's let go of the idea that everything needs to be perfect in 2023. But that is it for today's video. Those are some trends, some design facets, some things that have been popular in design that I just don't believe are going to be popular going forward. I think a lot of these things are going to dissipate in 2023 and they're going to be replaced by something new, things a little bit more effortless and the things that um, focus a little bit less on being perfect. But at the end of the day, if you love it, keep doing it. If you hate it, give it up. You do you and your home will look beautiful as soon as you start thinking in that way. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And until next time, have a beautiful day.